Sorry about that, folks. It seems I pressed the wrong button this morning and <laughs> the room didn't open up correctly. But I'm here now. Welcome to our Monday morning trading session. I hope you had a, a nice weekend. I know I did. Lots of birthday parties to go to and more this weekend as well. All right, uh, what you're looking at here is the uh, NASDAQ, for those of you new to the room. I've got my DTS system set up with the Hawk Scalper here in the top left, Falcon Swing Trader, top right, Eagle Trend Trader, bottom left, and the Raptor on the bottom right. As I mentioned, these charts are the NASDAQ. I'm also following crude oil and the Euro dollar, or the Euro US pair, for those of you following the Forex currencies. But please don't be shy about asking questions or requesting markets. This is your trading room after all. All right, we're only a few minutes into the session and as you can see, uh, we've opened with a huge gap to the upside. Uh, trade forecaster saying we're about to be moving into scalp mode within the minute. I think we might have to wait a moment for uh, for the dust to settle. We are getting some some signs of a re reversal signal. We now have some, two uh, rather substantial opening gaps. Uh, the one this morning and the one from last Thursday, I guess, which has not been filled yet. Aspen says, Eric, I have a number two short on the NASDAQ, and that would be this guy right here. And that is a, a viable short. It is just a couple minutes into the session, so, well, ideally you're going to be covering your trade up here. We've also got a first micro macro cross on the on the hawk and a trend change signal here on the falcon. But like I said, this is all coming very early. All right. Looks like we've got a little bit of support here on the lows now. See how we're getting a little bit of a second push. Let's see, what is that going to cost me to be wrong? Hmm. And because of the size of this huge opening gap, I might try to run this trade out a little bit, especially since I'm only taking a single. All right, here we go. Who 
would be nice if the market just made a straight line to its target, but that's rarely the case. these huge gaps, it's always difficult to judge. Okay, we might be seeing a little bit bigger test of the extreme. I would really hate to see the market break this little channel. Because that would make it look more like a bear flag. And that may lead to a larger pullback. You know, anytime you go counter trend like this, it's always a higher risk type trade. You can see the market very, very bullish, uh, extremely bullish through the overnight. Uh, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, six zones into our uh, support and resistance suite. So it looks like we're going to get a larger test of the extreme here. <whistles> Crazy market. Still a few wishy-washy type trades. Uh, the Eagle, more bullish now. This is our first in sync Eagle signal. Which would indicate that we're going to see something higher here. The Hawk, uh, a little bit more neutral now. We do have the green bar sell which we could short, or you could buy the failure. Uh, the Falcon did have the trend change signal to the short side right here. Uh, depending where your stop is at, we're kind of Could be making a trend change, could be making a retest of the high.
right, so here comes now the the larger test of the extreme. And what I mentioned the test of the extreme, what we're looking at is in this case the extreme is the high. And if we can see the market retest the high and fail, then there's a pretty good chance prices will head lower. That's what we're looking for right now. Hasn't happened just yet. But this bar, a little bit more neutral than some of the other bars preceding it. Well, you can see there's a lot of volume going through these bars by the width of them. That's a hopeful sign. Wide bars always occur at market turning points. A lot of volume always occurs at a market turning point. Still very bullish. Last chance for the for the buyers now. one more little flinch oh dear things looking a little bit more bullish still we've got ourselves a um, 
another hard edge bounce producing. We've got a late filter entry here in the Eagle. Has not engaged, but it has printed. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to bring my stops in a little bit above this uh, high of the day. I think that might be safe. And it will serve to take a little bit of risk out of the trade. If I can, hmm, I don't know, maybe the overnight low for the extra, what are we talking here, an extra $40, $50, maybe the overnight low is better. There we go. Uh, Robert asked, do you ever use a bracket order on the NASDAQ open? You know, Robert, it's funny. People are always trying to figure out how to trade the open because, of course, there's a lot of activity around the open. That's If you look at any chart and you say you look at a five-minute chart or a 15-minute chart or something like that and you put volume underneath, you'll see that first half hour <coughs> excuse me, of trading <clears throat> the volume is huge and then the volume subsides and the market kind of goes a little bit more sideways until the close when the volume spikes again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now that isn't true every day, of course, but um, that is kind of the pattern that the market follows throughout the day. For that reason, uh, traders have all, often tried to figure out what's the best way to trade the open. And I do know traders, uh, they don't bracket the five minute, but they'll bracket the 15 minute. And I know traders who also bracket the 30 minute. And uh, what they'll do is they'll trade the breakout higher or lower. So, uh, excuse me, this morning, you can see we're coming up near the top of the hour. So what they would do is they would place an OCO trade and they would, because it's the first 30 minutes of trading, they would buy above and they would sell below and th that would be it. That would be their trade. Now, if you choose to do something like that, um, put the stopwatch away. <laughs> you know, if the market is, oh, I'm not going to be able, oh, yes, I can. If the market's going to, um, if it's coming up on 15 minutes exactly, you don't say, oh, it's, you know, 15 minutes in, here's my high, uh, here's my low. I bet I'm going to bracket the trade like that. You know, if it looks like the market is moving, maybe give it another minute or two because what might happen is you may get a little swing like this and now you could actually tighten your parameters somewhat. So this would be a viable bracket trade as well. Even though this is the low of the morning, uh, you could certainly buy above the high and sell below the low. So to answer your question, Robert, I don't do it, but, or at least not recently, uh, but I do know of traders who do do it. And as with most things trading related, you know, it works until it doesn't work. It will work for you sometimes. Uh, other times, you know, there's not much to keep the market from poking through the high here, loading up on a couple more buy orders, and then falling through the floor. This is why, as a trading friend of mine always used to say, never trust a breakout. Why, when we get a breakout, we look for the retest and then the, the signal to buy or the retest 
and the signal to sell. This would be a little safer, a little more predictable, albeit the market could run from you. There's, there's no question about that. That's always our challenge as traders is to try to get in at the right time. Get in early, but not too early. That's a good question though, Robert. Thanks for asking. All right, we are waffling and we're starting to see here a lot of yellow bars cropping up on the Hawk. They're more or less the same price level, which is what happens when the market goes sideways. trade forecaster says we are in swing mode for about another 15 minutes so we might get some follow through and after that we are back into scalp mode oh goody I'll show you the dangerous part of our trade is this opening gap. As traders, we hate to see gaps. So we, and when I say we, I include myself in this as well because I'm terribly guilty of this. But we always anticipate the gap is going to fill, right? This is our objective today is the market will fill the gap. But what we should be doing is when we see a rather large gap like this, is you could just pretend that is one bar or a, a series of bars, obviously. But now it paints a different picture, doesn't it? Now it, it it's kind of lost a lot of its uh, bearishness, hasn't it? It doesn't look like uh, the market's going to fill the gap anymore. Now it looks like, hey, this is a full-on bull flag, and the market's just consolidating a bit, and then it's going to make another press higher. Never mind that we're trading above, well above 5,500 on the NASDAQ. Well, sorry, not well above. We're trading 5,502. <clears throat> but uh, these are some pretty lofty levels to be sure. Traders are out there scratching their heads wondering what's going on? <laughs> And now just to add to the confusion, we're getting a lot of sideways drift. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> Tony says after that great explanation, I'm sure sad about being short. Yes, well, my only consolation this time, Tony, is I didn't sell the low of the morning, <laughs> which I have a tendency to do sometimes. At least I didn't short down here. Like some poor bugger, but it is looking like uh, the market is going to try to run a little higher. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe the overnight lows will hold. As I mentioned before, this is always, always the challenge when you take a counter trend trade. The, the nice thing about a counter trend trade is you're, you're trading the odds of the trade for a lower risk trade, if that kind of makes sense. We can kind of keep our stops a little bit tighter because we always know where the stops go on a counter trend trade. They always go above the high or they go above the low. But the probability that a counter trend trade is going to work out is probably, oh, I don't know, like 35, 40%. It's, uh, it's definitely a lower probability trade. But like I say, the good news is we tend to have less money in play. Uh, that's also why I suggest if you do try a counter trend trade, just throw a single on it. You know, don't, don't go crazy. Even for those of you trading larger accounts, and if you're in a position where you can afford four or five or six contracts or more, throw a single on it, maybe two contracts so that you can split them if the trade really does take off. But it's not something you want to get too heavy on. not looking very good. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more selling on the break of the high. Now it's not done yet. You know, the buyers haven't exploded to the upside, but neither have the sellers knocked them down very much. Tony says, for me, the big problem is that I don't have separate accounts. So once I'm in this position, I have to stop out before I can take a long position. Should a good long signal present itself? Well, you should always have a reason for, you should always have two reasons for getting into a trade. And you should probably have two reasons for getting out of a trade as well. So, you know, there's nothing to prevent you from closing a trade early. Okay, they're ganging up on them a little bit more here now. Or they were.
the temptation when the market is this way is to start flip-flopping on your trades. Uh, the reversal button always proved deadly for me. A very expensive little toy. Where's our next resistance line? Hmm. 5511. If it was a little closer, I probably would adjust my stop, but part of the reason I took this trade so early was because it didn't have a huge risk amount to it. We might get a chance if we can at least see one bar print lower here. We might see a little bit more selling enter the marketplace. There we go. Okay, we got one bar. Things are looking up. Hard edge would be an ideal target that would put us down here around the 5484 area. Uh, after that, we're looking at around 5475 ish, and about every 10 points, give or take, after that. The primary resistance, 54.42, uh, that would be, that's near where the market left off on Friday. That would be an amazing target, although it does not seem all that likely at this point. Look at our uh, support and resistance suite, though. We only have two zones left to go. It's very, very rare for the market to trade through all the zones. It does happen occasionally.
Uh, hi, Clayton. Clayton says, I just set up a new chart for the NASDAQ with the default settings. Can you give me your settings for the NASDAQ chart? Um, they are the defaults, Clayton. Uh, I've got an eight tick brick. So that's on the data series there. I'm not going to horse around with the indicators right now because we're in a trade, but the soft edge setting, the SE setting under your, your Raptor indicator, by default it's set at 1.01. .01. I've set mine at 1.25. But that's really the only change I've made. Okay, a very decent looking test of the extreme now. And maybe even a break. Right, so we're the Raptors thinking as much. Hey, we've tested the extreme. We've got a soft edge cell. Like I say, target 54, 84, 85, 86 would bring us back to the hard edge. As well as our secondary uh, resistance line. Got to get below this nonsense here around 54.95. Or, pardon me, around 97. That's our first little obstacle. And then once we're below that, um, we're looking at the lows of the morning. And after that, we may well get into the opening gap. Here come the buyers one more time, stepping up. When you get a market that seems to be waffling as well, don't be afraid to take a second push on your signal. And by that I mean you allow the signal to engage let the market show you where it's going to flinch and then place your order beyond that point. So rather than entering at the hash mark, allow the market to react so you can see where its limits are and then look to short below there. All right, and should be no surprise, we're getting a hard edge buy signal. It just kind of goes with the theme here this morning. We should be in scalp mode by now. Oh, yes, full on scalp mode for at least a half an hour, according to Trade Forecaster.
Tony, you, you may still prove to be the smarter fellow here. Tony says, <laughs> oh, the pain when you moved your stop to 5507. I did not. I left mine around 5505. Obviously, Tony getting stopped out on that little hiccup there. And now the market trying to uh, trying to resume the downtrend. I've made this analogy before, but it holds true. Uh, when you take a trade like this, it's similar to, you know, placing a bet at a uh, roulette wheel or uh, or your ante in a card game. You know, if you don't like the cards you got, it's usually frowned upon if you go digging through the pile of chips to get your ante bag. <laughs> This is a similar type trade. I took the trade knowing I can afford the risk. I may as well let the trade try to play out. I have good reason for taking my stop out where I do. Um, right now, it really is a 50-50 proposition. There is a chance it could go higher, and there is a good chance that it could go lower. It's kind of in that no man's land. Uh, Elmer's asking about the auto break even function. If I can show you how to do that, absolutely, Elmer. All right, well, there's not much going on there, so I'll show you here on the Falcon. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your Trade Manager. Now, Trade Manager is a strategy. Now, if you already have your Trade Manager on, you will need to disable it to make any settings or any changes to the setting. So, turn it to false, turn it off. Your auto break even is near the top of the settings. Now these are actually the default settings. What I do is I figure if the market is going to get 75, 80% of the way to its profit objective, then that's probably time for me to roll my stop to break even. You know, if it's like three quarters of the way there, surely it can push through that extra little bit and get to my profit target. And if not, well, I'll take the break even stop out. So here in the case of the Falcon, I have a 20 tick target. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, 75, 80% is gonna be about 15, 16 ticks where I'm looking to roll to break even, all right? So, uh, like I say, these are the default settings anyhow, but if it were, say, on the Eagle, where I have uh, 40 ticks, I'll probably set a 30 tick target. You'll want to make sure you enable the auto break even. By default, it is set at false, so make sure you turn that to true. And you can also preset your, your offsets, how much profit you want to guarantee when the trade goes to a break even situation. When you have everything the way you like it, I suggest that you save a template. Just give it a name, whatever you want to call it, and remember to turn your trade manager back on. And that's it. Now you will have all your settings as per your presets. And I think I got tagged there. Yes, I did. Stinkers. Just not letting go. All 
uh, here we've got a, a yet another first micro macro cross to the upside. Actually, what I'm going to do is we'll just, I may try a single on that. The market still pretty uncommitted. getting some follow through here. I think I'm going to move into the uh, parabolic mode here. My profit target, you know, up here, looks like we got about five ticks in, and now the market's Already looking for some support.
Oh, it's going to be death by a thousand paper cuts here. Man, oh man, crazy kind of day. All right, let's just put that on the shelf. I know Robert, maybe Robert had the best idea here this morning, just bracketing the, the whole, the whole range, you know, by above. Uh, short below this whole mess, what's the low of the morning? Uh, 5,500 essentially. Oops. Tried everything else. Does not look like there is much love in the market today. Just very, very sideways, very, very tiny ranges. See all the yellow bars here, all the clusters on the on the hawk, just telling us this market very, very sideways.
I'm not sure I ever remember a market so sideways or so quiet, especially after such a <laughs> substantial gap. Personally, well, <laughs> this gap keeps calling to me, but I don't know, maybe we've got a little bit of a wedge type formation here. It's hard to say. I don't know. I, I'm just checking the news here. I don't see anything that's going to spark the market anytime soon. And no reason for the market to be so stale, so stagnant. All right, here they go. I'm going to try to move below the low of the morning, maybe kind of, sort of. I will get a stop in play.
All right, we're getting closer. <laughs> Robert's down to a one minute chart here. He says, I'm drawing trend lines on a one minute chart and I got a 10 tick scalp. It, you know what, folks? Sometimes you just have to resign yourself that, hey, this is, this is the kind of day it is. And you know what? If the bottom falls out of the market and we miss the move, we've missed the move. It's not the end of the world, right? These things happen. We're not going to catch every major move that the market makes. And I know some of you are going to start typing here, Eric, I don't want a major move. I just want to pick up a couple of bucks. But again, sometimes we got to sit through all this until we get that opportunity. And it may not even come today. It may be tomorrow that we see a decent move. But one thing is for certain, a huge gap like this, it, even if it doesn't fill today, is not going to hang around forever. You know, gaps do get filled. It may take a day or two, may even take a week, but the gap will fill. Okay, we're still waffling here at the lows of the morning. We'll take a look at the other tools. Um, well, we're working at first micro macro cross signal on the short side. So that's getting a little bit more in sync. You can see the Raptor here producing another uh, number two soft edge cell. Problem remains the same. You know, it's, it is a counter trend signal. It is something to try, but you don't want to get too too crazy on it. You know, don't don't go in like this for you know four contracts, ultra tight stop, 
it'll be enough to throw one or two on it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, well, at least you haven't bet the farm. Well, I wish there was more to talk about, but there ain't. <laughs> it's. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that now that we've broken this little bullish trend line, we are going to see the market continue lower. Um, you could try to, you know, short one of these follow-up signals. I'm going to stick with the the eagle signal that we have going. It is painful, however, to be sure. Uh, Floyd says crude oil is on the move. Well, we should have been watching crude a little closer. Just a moment here. So here now, crude oil on the Raptor. 
And Crude's been terribly quiet, but well, a little bit of a move anyway. It's opening at 6 a.m. Pacific time right here. A little bit of a drift lower, back below $50 a barrel. Oh, that's good. That means the price at the pumps will be down too. <laughs> oh, dear. Still haven't managed a major break below the low of the morning. Or, pardon me, uh, the low of this little channel that we've seen. The euro is tailing off a little bit, and that's funny because very often the stock market will follow what the euro is doing. Now, we're not talking a one-to-one -one type relationship, but everybody is tied at the hip nowadays. So here's the Euro on the Raptor. And uh, we would have done better shorting the, uh, the Euro signal here. But at the same time, we took the NASDAQ short. Also retreated, obviously did not get as high as the NASDAQ, and has subsequently fallen off a little bit. Problem with the Euro, or entering the Euro trade now, is that it's almost the end of the European session. So it's a little bit late in the day to be doing something with the Euro.
Hey, well, folks, you know, we're just watching the market waffle back and forth here. I still like the bracket idea, the OCO order. Um, we may or may not get filled. I think we're going to button up the room here uh, pretty quick and uh, try this again tomorrow. So don't go too crazy. You may want to throw a onesie on, though, if uh, we do see a breakout. Just see what comes of it. Um, Try to run a slightly wider stop, however, because the market is so sideways, uh, it could tend to thrash about a little bit. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. Bye for now.